Now, we have a hugely interesting interview coming up for you that I know you won't want to miss, so do stay with us for the next 20 minutes or half an hour or so. Um, we're talking th today to uh, Mary Davis. You won't know who Mary Davis is, but you certainly will know who her late mother was, and that was famous Rita Lynch, who was born in McCroom at Parkview, just at the Mill Street Cross. And of course, everybody I think in McCroom and far, far beyond knows that Rita went on to be a famous international singer. Uh, Mary, we're delighted to uh, welcome you to local television. Thank you. And um, of course, you're here because there's going to be an exhibition in the library commemorating your mother's fantastic career as a singer. Now, that that uh, uh, exhibition is opening on the 16th of February and more of that later on at 6.30. But maybe you could just fill us in a little bit about your mother and about her life. First of all, in McCroom, born in McCroom. Rita was born in McCroom and at that stage they lived in Pound Lane, New Street in McCroom. And she was born there on the 2nd of December 1914. Her father and her mother had uh, four children and then Rita arrived. And that was very exciting because after the four boys, the little girl arrived. Um, she moved then to Parkview in 1917 and the family uh, enlarged. They had four boys after Rita, so there was nine children there and they lived happily in Parkview, which was actually built by my mother's grandfather, who was John O'Shea, who had the mineral water factory Indeed. in New Street. Yes. A famous man, a famous businessman, who built the house there uh, originally for an IRC officer to rent. But his own family, his own daughter, and the daughter's family, that is Mary O'Shea, Mary Lynch now, and her family, including Rita, little Rita, moved in there. Right. So they lived there happily and they went to school uh, in McCroom. They were always very musical and they spent a lot of evenings uh, playing and singing. The whole family were musical. They had uh, a great uh, breadth of musical talent, both classical and traditional. Yes. And the... Children went to school, um, they crossed the square many times, um, even while the black and tans were there, and there are great stories, uh, which I hope we'll talk about on the 16th, about the black and tans uh, in the house, even. Yes. They took over, they commandeered the house, McCroom, uh, in Parkview. And uh, so Rita continued her studies, sang in the local choir, and sang with some of the nuns there, encouraged her to sing. And when it came to her secondary education, she was sent to the Ursuline Convent in Black Rock in Cork. Now, on the McCroom connection there, Mary, um, she, at that time, uh, lots of people will still remember that... Um, we will we'll remember her singing in the choir in McCroom. Not lots of people now, but many older people will. And certainly those of us who are still connected to the choir will remember her reputation. Because this was the time when Rita Lynch sang and other people from McCroom had with great voices too. Like Dick Brown now, for instance, was one. Certainly, that certainly Dick Brown was one, and there's another person who's yeah. about, whose name Dixon I can't remember. Dixon Collins was, another. was yes. often mentioned when I was a child. Yes, Dick Brown, Dixon Collins were often mentioned yes. by my mother. And my my mother used to sing as well. She was an alto with them, and I think they used okay. to sing together. Yeah, yeah. she was. Uh, Hensi O'Sullivan that time. Oh, my goodness. And all those names are back in my own childhood. Are they? Oh, yes. my goodness, yes, because yes. we spent a lot of time at um, in Parkview as children. Yes. And we'd know all the names. And I'm sure people watching this will remember the names and, in fact, are probably related to these people. Indeed, yeah. Indeed, yes. Yeah. So the connection goes right back. So that was um, she. Nan Richardson, of course, would have been in charge, I think, of the choir at that time in McCroom. And they were during her, her early days. But on she went then to the Ursulines in Black Rock. Headed off to the Ursulines in Black Rock as a boarder, 
loved it there, uh, picked up a hockey stick and was very interested in hockey and was very good at playing hockey. But she was immediately noted uh, for her singing. Yes. And one of the nuns, a Mother Peter at the time, contacted her own mother back here in McCroom and said, you've got to beg, borrow or steal to get Rita's voice trained. So they were serious about it. Yes. And then she, play, she played in all the stage shows and started um, entering for the Feshna in Cork. Yes. So that's how that started. The competition started then. So she did have her voice trained then, I presume, by somebody in Cork. She had her voice trained outside of the school in Cork and that person encouraged her and, and entered her in lots of the competitions, which she won. She won the whole lot of them. And yes. she started win- winning, really, mm. ca- in the fish uh, in, uh, in Cork, 1937 uh, 38. Yes. She was a soprano. She was a soprano, yes. yes. And then when she left school, she wa- came back here to her mother for a while, but actually the plan was to go to Dublin and be trained further. So she went to Dublin and was trained under Jean Nolan, who actually offered to train her for nothing. Imagine. She yeah. was so, so impressed good. with yeah, so impressed with her voice, but actually, well, that didn't happen. So she made an arrangement, and she started uh, singing in Dublin. And at that stage, we're talking 1938 and 39. She entered for the leader competitions in the Feshkiol and the soprano competitions, and she won them all, one after the other. Yes, and there there was a famous competition which is still around, I think, and that was the um, John McCormick Cup. Was she? Indeed, that was the most. That was that was at the day. That was the Voice of Ireland at the day. Yes, really, that was the most important one, and people gathered around their uh, worlds every night for listening to the. listening to the show and listening to the coming up to the finals. So it was broadcast live. It was broadcast live yes. and Count John McCormack was overseeing the whole thing and he did say when she won it in 1939 he said not one of them can touch the little Lynch girl from McCroom. Look at that. And he said that she was away ahead of everybody else. Yes. But um, people used to gather. People came through the streets of McCroom and I did hear the story here yes. right in this library in uh, 2009 when I gave a little talk about um, a lady being brought in by her parents for the final walking out of the darkness gives a lovely picture, doesn't it? Yes, Walking. indeed. She was a little girl. She was brought by the hand by her parents, brought into the town, and she remembers hearing people adjusting their sets. Yes. Their radio sets inside the windows and walking, walking, walking to her uncle's house, uh, sitting inside, listening to the competition. And when the winner was announced, there was great excitement because Rita from here had won yes and then she was taken by the hand and walked away again uh, leaving the sounds of the excitement behind her I thought it was a beautiful picture yes it's lovely, lovely. Yeah. I thought it was very emotional when very, I heard it very really evocative very of, evocative of, of, what, of what the time yeah. indeed yeah. 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 and of course and, and when she described the darkness of the town no public lighting yeah. and then the old wit her dry batteries for the radio <laughs> at the time and all of that up and down very you know, much of twiddling and fiddling but of course much. the war was coming wasn't it the war broke mm. out and uh, actually after after the 1939 competition, one of the prizes, one of the parts of the prizes was that the winner was to be sent to Italy to be trained. But because the war broke out, Rita wasn't sent away. Yes. Um, and that's an item that uh, Margaret Burke Sheridan wasn't very happy about. She thought she should have been sent anyway, but I think Rita was happy enough because there was a lot going on and it would have been certainly Very dangerous. dangerous yeah. Circumstances were quite different then. Yes. So um, she stayed in Ireland, but she travelled, didn't stop her travelling over and back to London. No, she did perform in Dublin as well, didn't she, in, 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 in theatre? She did. She performed in, for example, Hansel and Gretel. Yes, which I think we have here. We have here and we have the original programme is here. Yes. And not only do we have the photograph and the original programme, but we actually have one of the, the dresses. performance costume here. And this is 1944. And this was the for actual, this show, this the Hansel, actual and ha- show. Hansel and Gretel show. Hansel and Gretel. So she's, see she's, we- she's wearing it in the photograph. She's wearing it in the photograph. Look at that. And we have the programme there as well. And and so her gloves, can you, and can her you just... And beautiful pair of kid beautiful 
kid, stage kid gloves. Worn up to the elbows. Worn up to the elbows. And they're soft and most beautiful, yes. beautiful items. Yeah. They are there as well in her archive. So she, um, she partook in a lot of the stage shows, Hansel and Gretel, and there was um, a whole number of items uh, that she did. And she did oratorio. She did a, a leader concerts. You, yes. Mm. Uh, uh, no. Okay. The oratorio, the oratorio, the oratorio that she did would be something like the religious, obviously the religious programs. There, the, the likes of um, um, some of these, um, the Messiah being a classic one, the, of course. Well, this the, the most interesting thing about the Messiah is that on the two hundredth anniversary. Yes. Of the Messiah, in other words, the uh, when they were doing the performance for the 200 year centenary, and that is the original program. Yes. She was the lead soprano. Look. And yeah. to her, it was a fantastic occasion. She took it very seriously, as they all did. It was a highlight of that year in Dublin, very 1942. Good. It was a very, and of course, the war big. was raging in Europe at that stage. Yes, but they had their own kind of circle and they yes. had their own way of doing things. Uh, so she worked hard. She did an awful lot over and back to uh, Liverpool, over and back to uh, London yes. and over and back to Manchester. Very good, yeah. And up and down all over the Ireland. I mean, I've she's been thinking now, she's back She's now like really now. is a professional she's singer. She's a professional singer and she's known, she's the number one soprano in Ireland. Imagine, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very good. So she's done very well. And then, I suppose, as the war came towards an end, she went even further afield. She did. The first thing she did then was, uh, I actually have to show you this one. This is 1940, her first flight. Mm-hmm. And that's the first flight to a concert in England. And we have here, this is actually the picture of her passport, okay, her passport we'll picture. Straight like that. Yes. That's her very first flight. Very good, yeah. <laughs> and that was across to Liverpool. Across to Liverpool, uh, from, um, from Dublin to Liverpool, and the windows would be blacked out. Yes. And I can't understand. I mean, nowadays, we... we, we We'd probably not go up at something <laughs> like that, but she was, she yeah, didn't. Yeah. It didn't really bother her. Um, yeah. I have to say, all her life she didn't like flying. Really? No, but yeah. I suppose it was on account of the major catastrophe in her life, which was the major uh, emergency on her flight to um, Chicago in 1949. Right. Now, preceding that. She went to London, 1948, and made records with HMV. Yes. And these H HMV records were um, the famous, the famous ones that we all know. They were the um, Home Sweet Home. Yes. The Last Rose of Summer. Yes. Um, lovely dearest. Lovely dearest. Yes. And the Fairy Tales of Ireland. I will walk with my love. All those gorgeous songs. She recorded those in London, 1948. And we still have those recordings, don't we? We do. Yeah. We do. We and have they'll, them. they'll be here at the exhibition. They will be they? here at the exhibition. What we did um, for the centenary celebrations, we remastered them and we have them now. I had great help from uh, Ty Kelleher in Bellavorny, from Harry Bradshaw in Dublin. And we have a CD of... Uh, 15 lovely tracks, lovely, yeah. which incorporate all those Wonderful. as well. And a few little things that we, we found that we didn't know were there. Yes. Now, everybody's dying to hear about this air, airline disaster <laughs> or, or almost disaster. <laughs> almost. Clo very close indeed. She yes. took off from Shannon. She was seen off by her husband, my father, Pat, uh, to go to uh, Chicago for the... Uh, for the celebrations, the celebrations in uh, 1949, the St. Patrick's Day celebrations, the plane took off and instead of heading out, out over the sea, she noticed that it was turning in another direction. So she said to the lady beside who was a little old American lady, I think we've gone in the, the wrong direction. And the little lady said, who was obviously very well traveled, said, not at all, she said, not at all. And she didn't even look out. So Rita watched the sun and said there's something wrong here next thing there was an announcement from the captain whose name she never forgot his, his name was Captain Hostetler and Captain Hostetler said they had a problem and that the wheels wouldn't retract up into the plane 
and they were going to circle uh, London for some time to burn fuel. So they did for a few hours, and as they did, she remembers the carpet being rolled up, and there were people with hammers and spanners and everything trying to whack down through the... <laughs> oh, really? Down yeah, to, to the try, undercarriage? Trying to the undercarriage, trying to, uh, to, to get dislodge, it. yes. So anyway, things got a little bit um, nervous, and they were offered a drink. So she took the drink she was offered, and that was her first alcoholic drink that she ever took <laughs> <laughs> in those circumstances. Memorable occasion. Memorable occasion, indeed. Yes. And the little lady said to her, I wonder, ma'am, would you say the rosary with me? And Risha said, I will, she said, but I'm going back to put on my makeup first. Yes. So she went back to the ladies behind. She took her makeup with her. She looked in the mirror and said, Risha, if you're going down, you're going to look your very best. Yes, this is reminiscent of, of Lord <laughs> Esther in the, in the Titanic. <laughs> in the Titanic. Who put on his evening suit and bow tie. Exactly. It was going to be done, yes. In style. Just, just it was in going style. to happen. As she lived, As she was she, going to go. She was going, yes. So she came back, sat with the lady, and they said the rosary. They bumped their way down into London anyway, and the brakes failed, which was another catastrophe. Yes. Eventually, they were given another plane. The plane took off in London. I stopped briefly in Shannon and then some 15 hours later they eventually took off across and the Atlantic and she went and she went and she went yeah and of course she went to a very exciting uh, time in in America then didn't she and and subsequently really she had many trips to America she had this one trip to America was to have lasted um, it was have lasted three six weeks Yes. But she actually stayed three months. All right. Even though she had a husband and a son here. Yes. But it didn't stop her. And there are some lovely letters between herself and her mother in Parkview about how things were going, how people were organising the um, the events. Yes. She did loads of broadcasts, live broadcasts on yes. radio. And she sang in front of, I think it was between three and 4,000 for the celebration uh, in April 1949 of the final part <coughs> in the jigsaw that Ireland was to be a, a republic and it was attended by all the dignitaries in Chicago including um, Sean, Sean McBride, M McBride oh, yes. who at the time was of our course. minister yes. for external affairs yes. he was at it and Rita sang and she had a most wonderful time and yes. then she sang also with um, Michael O'Duffy. He had a radio show and sang live with him. Yes. She went to Boston, and in Boston, uh, the famous Arthur Fiedler asked her to sing with him for yes. an Irish night at the Boston Pops. So yes. that was a highlight too. Very good, lovely. So she really, she really did achieve international stardom. And mm. I suppose it was a time when we people relied on radio to hear her and of course the records and the gramophone exactly. at the time as well yeah. Yeah. no television in those days no television in those days no, no. although she did see herself in television for, for one snippet in Chicago did she she indeed? did now I don't think it, it, it still exists but she saw herself and she thought it was the strangest thing Imagine, to look yeah. at yourself that was her first reaction yes but yeah. um, but that was just starting. There was supposed to have been a television show, and I think she missed it on account of the the, emer the plane emergency. Yes. But anyway, she had a most wonderful time, and she made friends, and she had loads of fans there. Yes. So yes. that was really the highlight. Oh, she was uh, she was an international star at that stage, very no doubt about so, it. Yeah. Oh, so very much wonderful so. life, really. Yeah, absolutely terrific. And that life now is to be commemorated here. Uh, by the way, when did she, when how, when did she die? She died on the sixteenth of January two thousand and nine. So she lived to be a fine age. She was really. ninety four, and she was absolutely wonderful to the very end. And she was always very grateful and gracious. Yes. To the very end, she was a, a lady in that sense. But what we didn't realise, we knew there was an archive there, and we knew there were boxes there. But it's only when we started looking at them we found out that there were about 2,000 items in the archive. My goodness. And the archive is something which is uh, not just an archive, not just of one person's career, but it's really a social history of McCroom, Cork, Dublin, Ireland at the time. Yes. And then to the... So it's, it's, it's a wonderful 
a whole realm of archive, which uh, we were very lucky to have UCC and the Cork Music Library put together as, an, as a digital archive. Oh, good, yes. And the digital archive will be there, of course, forever. And that was done under Dr. Orla Murphy, who's head of the Digital Humanities Department in UCC. Will it go online, I wonder? It will, will and, and it is online. Is it online? Yes, it is online, oh, yes, which good. is wonderful. You must get us the, um, the web link for that. I and, will. And uh, when you come to the exhibition next time. Yes, indeed. Now, this exhibition has already taken place in in uh, the Cork City Library, mm-hmm. and I know it was a gala occasion. Mm-hmm. Lord Mayor was there, and um, some of the great Cork music uh, people mm-hmm. were turned up for it as well. And then it ran for, what, a month or more, maybe? It ran for a month in the Cork Music Library, and then it went around to different libraries in Cork City Yes. during the early months of 2015. Yes. And now... For the very grand finale, we are, I'm delighted that we're in McCroom because this is this is where it started. Yes. And this is, for me, certainly, this is a home sweet home. This is Rita remembered in her own place, yes. which she always loved and she always very, very fond of McCroom. And indeed, many of my own early memories are back in McCroom through the streets and in Parkview. Indeed. So this is a wrap-up of remembering one of McCroom's Greatest artist, really. Yes, indeed. And it's wonderful to be here. Very much so. And thank you very much indeed for coming along today to give us uh, this interview, Mary. Um, it's it's a very personal, nostalgic um, memory for me because my late mother spoke so warmly of her. Oh. And my uncle, Dennis Denis O'Sullivan, who was a great, great uh, a tenor in his time as well, who would have sung with her as well, by the way, because they are, they were oh, contemporaries, really. Maybe she was slightly, just very slightly ahead of them, but I know they did sing together. Oh, and um, um, I, so there is a, a nostalgic connection for me with this too, mm. I have to say. Now, I would really, I, I, again, in thanking you, I want to remind everybody that this exhibition, you'll get glimpses of it in our camera shots now, and as you have done indeed throughout the interview, uh, it's going to be superb. How long will it run for? It will run right from now until the end of February. And these storyboards, they were part of the, the work that we did for the exhibition in Cork and they were part of the UCC yes. uh, input as well, I have to say. The storyboards are absolutely excellent and they give a lovely, lovely glimpse yes. of her life. And I must, I must say too that I'm really, really looking forward to meeting people in McCroom, from McCroom, whose names I will remember yes. and whose relatives I will remember certainly as well. And we, we, on that night, I hope to meet loads of people and we'll go back in some of the stories. Yes. And we'll hear some of the snippets too of um, that nobody has heard before of interviews uh, done back to 1949. Yes, and I think it would be great if there are people out there listening to us who have uh, relatives, maybe elderly, elderly and older relatives at this stage, whose lives would have overlapped with Rita's, who might be able to come along, particularly on the 16th of February. Now, um, Mary, just to clarify the exhibition, the storyboards are here now. Mm-hmm. For as of now. Correct, yes. So anybody can pop in and see these oh, now. Oh, yes, indeed. But the exhibition is formally opening on the 16th, isn't it's that on right? On the 16th, we're having an evening mm-hmm. where we gather around half past six, gather meet, uh, and sit down and enjoy ourselves first. And then at a seven o'clock, um, Evelyn Grant... From Lyric FM. From Lyric FM. And yes. myself will be there to do some stories and to, to give a little perspective on it on the whole idea about the archive and uh, its setting up and about Rita's life. And we'll play some uh, interviews that ha- have not been heard by anybody else and it, it would be a lovely, lovely little gathering together. And afterwards then we'll have a little finger food and a glass of wine. And that would be lovely to hear people. And anybody who would like, who can't be there or who wants to contact me at some stage with something of interest, of course they can. I'd be delighted indeed. Yes, and people can just turn up now, can't they? They, they can. don't have to book in or anything. No, it's a public, and that's very much what we wanted it to be, uh, an open night Yes. for McCrompians. Yes, 
Yes. And that's uh, that's very much what Rita would have liked to an open night. And we all get here and we celebrate. We celebrate her life and we celebrate McCroom and we celebrate the hundred years since she was born. Very good. And of course, while while the storyboards will be present, the archive won't until the 16th, I presume, with it, all of this. I'll bring some, I will bring some of the archives, some of the actual pieces. Some of them are represented on the storyboards, yes. as you'll see, but we'll bring some of the more interesting pieces and the pieces that uh, refer mostly to McCroom, I bring them with me on the night so yes. we can have a look at that yes, as well. And then I will give um, mm. tell you how to get on to the archives so they can look at it online as well. Yeah, and we'll have the CD, of course, if people want it. Fantastic. Great stuff altogether. And thanks again. Thanks again, Mary. Now, just to, just to, to um, I suppose, put it firm, firmly in your memory, it is quite early. It's at 6.30 on the 16th of February. Do put it in your diaries and do come along as uh, an honour, really, to this great, great McCroom voice. Mm-hmm. 